While certain details have been altered for the sake of dramatization, the following true story has been carefully researched for authenticity and is presented as it happened. Life, like any journey, involves stops along the way. Sometimes there are detours, sometimes we're blocked by barriers, and sometimes beautiful and unexpected things happen. This is one such journey, the journey of my life. My name is Dini Weidianitias. I'm not an actress. I'm the real Dini of the story. And this is my life. Let the journey begin. I was on a business trip, taking the Jakarta Yogyakarta Express, when the train came to an unexpected stop. Excuse me, sir. Yes, ma'am. Why are we stopping here? I don't know, ma'am. There may be mechanical difficulty. When are you going to know something? I'm going to ask the engineer, ma'am. You're coming back, aren't you? Can you believe this? We'd probably be stuck here all day. And I can guarantee you that the air conditioner is going to give out. And it's already getting hot. What do you see? They are not going to make us get out here, are they? Imagine. What? Imagine what? I grew up here, in this area. Oh, really? Good, so you know where we are. Good. Gombong. Gombong? And my sister is meeting me at Yogyakarta. When will we get there? My, where did that conductor go? Tejo Kaniawan's family. Are you Mrs. Kaniawan? I am Tejo Kaniawan's wife. Mr. Kaniawan has had a heart attack. 
Did you say a heart attack? But how is this possible? A lab report indicates he had diarrhea. We couldn't understand what had happened. My father had been perfectly fine one moment, then ill with diarrhea and vomiting the next. After we checked his blood pressure... Several hours after he was taken to the hospital, he had a heart attack, and then he died. We were going to inform you. Now... He died just like that. I felt as if I had been struck by lightning. We did the best we could. We did our best to help Mr. Kuniawan, but... But... He has passed away. It's impossible. Impossible, Tejo said. It's impossible. It's impossible. What will happen to my baby? We join you in your grief. Sorry, ma'am. I can't accept this. What should I do? I'm here for you. Don't, Don't worry. Something. I'm here. Don't worry. Please. There's something I have to tell you. I'm right here with you. My father had been having an affair with my aunt Sundari, my mother's sister. She was eight months pregnant when my father died, but that wasn't all. My mother was also pregnant at the time. I didn't know what to do or where to turn. All along, I considered my dad as a hero. Now I felt betrayed. Please go ahead, sir. And I was worried about how our lives were going to turn out. Ladies and gentlemen, may God's peace and blessing be upon you. I was 12 years old, the oldest of five children, and now my mother was pregnant again. Mother wasn't a working woman. How were we going to live? We gather today because my brother Tejo has passed away. Ladies and gentlemen, if he did wrong in his life, I hope that you will forgive him. I will be responsible for whatever he did. And peace be upon you, and God's mercy and blessings be upon you, and peace be upon you. I suppose Aunt Sundari had divorced, though I wouldn't have thought so at the time. Because of the affair with my father and her pregnancy, she fell into disgrace. Because of that, she left Gongbong, not knowing where to go. I did give Wolandari some advice, though. Then what happened next? Actually, I told her. I pointed out that abortion is one way to handle her predicament. We have to think realistically, you know. By the way, have you heard? Heard what? Didn't you hear that Tejo had a second mistress? <gasps> it seems stress over by Bandong. Where did you hear oh. that? I think Sanjaya, her cousin who came yesterday, she told me. Which cousin is that? <laughs> the one married to the taxi driver. <laughs> now, let me tell you this. Mm. The chickens and the fighting oh. cocks should fetch a handsome price. Mm. He must have had a lot of money. Mm. And that doesn't include the photography studio. Oh, I never knew your brother was such an accomplished photographer. You never told me. Oh, my brother had a lot of skills, actually. Many skills, actually. He was good. <laughs> Especially with the ladies. <laughs> <laughs> uh, who doesn't know about Tijo Kuniwan? At any pace, 
he could get any woman he wanted. <laughs> <laughs> yes, yes, yes. We'll wait and see what will happen to the family. The saddest part concerns Sundari. I don't know what she's going to do. I know she'll be knocking on your door soon, I suppose, looking for a handout. Who else can she ask for help? Will she come to me? <laughs> I don't think so. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I agree with you. She'll come to my house, all right. But if she meets my wife at the door, there's nothing I can do about her. <laughs> <laughs> The very people we were counting on to help us said things which hurt the heart. At that point, I didn't know what to do. I felt only God could save us. You were just a child at that time. Yes, I never went back to the field ever again. When my father's pension finally came through, we moved to Semrong. My mother opened a small store next to the house to make ends meet, but it was always a struggle. Eventually, she decided to put up for adoption two of my sisters and one of my brothers. I also heard things were worse for An Sundari. After her son was born, she moved to Sukoharjo to live with my grandmother. Two years went by. Those were difficult years. Children? I can't believe you're all quiet. So this is how you raise your children. Your little kids are bastards, not my son. Hey! No one asked you to bring your problems to this town, you know? Are you telling us how we need to raise our children? Huh? Who taught you to jump into bed with every man you meet? At least I waited to have kids until I got married. Not like you. You probably don't even know who your son's father is. She doesn't even know her son's father. Nowhere else to go, and Sundari and Bambang left Tsukohajo and came to Semarang. Against my wishes, my mother gave in to Sundari's pleas and decided to take them in. It seemed to me at the time that we had enough problems of our own. Later, would you help me take the clothes off the line? Go away! What are you doing here? I said, go away! Do you know? I hate you! I hate you! Fill up the bucket again. 
It's all right. Please don't worry. Dean is watching him. Is that? What gives you the right to read someone else's diary? Bring it here. Bring it here. When I discovered Anne's diary reading my diary, I could not hold it in anymore. While I may have written some cruel things about her and Bang Bang, they were all true. At least they were all true to me. After that, I told my mother to choose between them and me. I should have been happy to see An Sundari and Bang Bang go back to Sukarhajo, and I was. But anger toward the two of them began to give way to anger toward someone else. My mother. I discovered she planned to marry again, a decision she had made without discussing with anyone else in the family. And I began to think, what is the point in praying five times a day, or not cheating in school? What's the point in restraining myself from sinful things if I won't be entering heaven anyway, because I can't forgive my mother? It all made me so angry. I finally came to the conclusion that I didn't care about religion anymore. I didn't care about being polite. I just wanted to be free. I wanted to do what I wanted to do, and I decided nothing was going to get in my way, including religion. So I started breaking every rule there was. It was my first year of high school. I did everything I wanted, but then I saw things that were shocking, such as seeing one of my friends crawling on the floor and bleeding because she had a miscarriage, or another friend going to jail because he was caught stealing. I began to ask myself, is this really the kind of life I want? Life within the confines of religion hadn't made me happy, but a free life without the rules of religion wasn't something I wanted either. Then came Ramadan, and I found myself turning back to my faith. I began to spend time reading religious books and praying again. I read the Quran sincerely and felt a great desire to be close to God. I truly wanted to find peace. I prepared myself for the Tahajjud prayer. I wanted to ask God about many things. I had a strong faith that whatever I asked for that night, God will listen to me and give His answer. I prayed according to the memorized verses. Truly, my heart was broken and I cried out to God. Oh God, 
Oh God, from the depths of my heart, I want to please you more than anything. Please show me the way, God, and I promise I'll follow you wherever you lead me. But if you don't, if you don't show me the way tonight, I don't know, I don't know what I will do. If you don't show me the way tonight, don't blame me for what happens. Don't blame me for living the way I choose. But if you, but if you show me who you are and what, what you want from me, I promise you, I promise you, my dear God, that I will follow you wherever you lead. At that moment, a bright light began to appear in front of me. It took the form of a figure, a man in a white robe. I couldn't see the details of his face, but his presence was somehow calm and reassuring. And suddenly, without knowing how, I realized he was Jesus, and he said, follow me. Dini, follow me. I was very confused because I thought, Lord, I'm a Muslim. How is it possible to follow you? You're the one that people call the God of the Christians, the God of the infidels, who don't know Allah. And he waited for me to come to him. Tears began to cover my face, and finally I said, God, if this is the way of truth, then I want to follow you. At that moment, I felt a peace I had never felt before. I saw him smiling, and then he slowly left. I hope I haven't offended you, ma'am. Whatever happened obviously affected you deeply. I'll never be the same. I've never been the same since that day. I understand. Tell me what happened next. I looked for someone who was a Christian. There was none in my small village. I looked but I knew of a Christian family in a village nearby. I started to go there. They were afraid of me at first because I asked them for a Bible, but eventually they gave me a Bible and I began to read it. I hid everything from my mother, but she found out before long. I know, mothers always find out. What happened next? Well, she pleaded with me to change. She cried. She thought she was a failure as a mother, that somehow it was all her fault, or that I was still angry with her, you know, trying to get revenge. And the rest of the family? <laughs> Yakas! You're not a member of this family anymore! Arif, don't be so harsh. She needs time to reconsider, that's all. She's had plenty of time to reconsider. This has gone far enough. 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 I made a promise to God that if he would show me the way, I would follow him. Forgive me. I don't mean to hurt anyone here, but... But I've made my decision. Dini, your mother and I have also made our decision. As Muslims and as Japanese, we have, we have a serious responsibility to raise our children. The obligation of children is to respect and obey their parents. You have to understand that. 
if you choose to go your own way in this matter of religion, then you must be responsible for your own life. From now on, you make your own decisions and you take care of yourself. You know what that means. You have to find your own money for everything. Food, school, a place to live, everything, everything. Dini, what your uncle means is that you no longer have the right to ask your parents for anything. You can't ask anything. I believe you know that. Now, get your things and leave. Hurry up! Come here, my little boy. I don't know where the strength came from, but I left home. I moved to another city named Solo. I was 16 years old. I rented a room and began to go to school to become a social worker. I had already completed my first year of studies while in Samarang. The administrators of the school in Solo accepted me as a transfer student without any questions. I found a part-time job after school and managed to get by. I figured if something went wrong, I could always go to my grandmother for help. I spent three years in Solo. I return home for visits every so often. When I graduated from school, I eventually found a job in Samarang. When I moved back, it was difficult at first, but eventually things got back to normal. Wow. <laughs> That's a relief. I guess it's behind you now. It must have been a struggle for them to forgive. No, no, actually the one who struggled the most was I. I thought, I thought Christians are supposed to forgive. Yes, that is true. But it can be a very, very long distance. From here... to here. Come in, come in, have a seat. No, no, that's all right. You look exhausted. Well, I think I'm worried more than tired. I thought if we moved back here, Bang Bang would change. If you see him now, he just sits in his room with his mind wandering off most of the time. Or he's walking the streets. That's not good. He definitely needs a job. Yes, I understand, but what can he do? He's only been through the ninth grade. He doesn't have a trade. He can't do anything. Don't worry, I'm sure something will turn up. Let me give you some food to take home with you. Assalamu alaikum. Assalamu alaikum. Alaikum salam. Hi, I am Dini. Dini? Yes, it's me, Dini. Is your mother home? Yes, she is. Mom, Dini is here. 
Dini. And... Please, have a seat. Do you want something to drink, Dini? Please don't chop yourself. A few days ago, I overheard a conversation between you and Mom. I... I can't handle it. I'm so sorry. I've treated you so badly. Forgive me. Forgive me. It's all right, Dini. I am so ashamed. Please forgive me. Forgive me for the mean things I've done to both of you. Forgive me, please. I'm so sorry. That's fine, Dini. I have already forgiven you. Bum Bum came back with me to Jakarta. When we got settled, I gave him money to start a small business selling shoes at the market. After three months, he began to make a profit and didn't need money from me anymore. Where is he now? In Jakarta. He's doing fine. Sorry, I, I always cry at happy endings. But actually, this is not the ending. So what happened next? Is there something better? Oh, much better. There was still one person I needed to forgive. Your uncle? The one who slapped you? He wouldn't have been so quick with the hands if I'd been around. No, no. I forgave him a long time ago. It was my father. Your father? But he died when you were a young girl. Exactly. And left me with all the confused thoughts and bitterness. To sort things out on my own. He left me all alone with my problems. And now you have forgiven him, right? <laughs> When did that happen? Just now. Do you see that cemetery across the way? Yes, I see it. My father is buried there. until this train stopped a short while ago. My unforgiveness was buried there, too. A God, because He is the God of love, couldn't let me have it my way. I had to learn my lessons. He says that if we want to be forgiven our sins, we must forgive those who have sinned against us. As I've been telling you the story, I've been thinking back on how much I loved my father and how my father really did love me. We had good times, you know? Wonderful times, and I need to remember that. It's as if God stopped the train, just for you. I've been thinking about that. As if, as if you know God intimately. As if God is your best friend. He told me to 
follow him. I haven't always known where he's taking me. But no, I know I can trust him to take me where I need to go. He will take care of whatever I need. He's always with me. conditioning. <laughs> no, they didn't. I guess now the story ends here. Or is it just beginning? Does this one have a happy ending? Ma'am, you'll have to tell me how it ends. When people we hold in high regard let us down, we feel disappointed. Our trust in them disintegrates because those we admire fail to meet our expectations. Worse yet, we can become bitter. The more important the person is in our life, the greater the disappointment can be. Young Dini rationalized that she had every right to be angry and bitter. Angry and bitter toward her parents, toward her own Sundari, and her half-brother Bam Bam. Even toward God. Then she had a remarkable transformation. She received a vision of the Lord Jesus when she was seeking God's will for her life and determined to follow him wherever he might lead. In a way we cannot understand as human beings. The Lord Jesus appeared in her bedroom, extended his hand to her, and said these words, Follow me. Coming to Jesus is a wonderful first step, but as the real life Dini told us, our life on earth is a journey with twists and turns, unscheduled stops, and many lessons along the way. When we are trusting in the Lord Jesus, we, like Dini, follow him wherever he leads and do whatever he asks. For Dini, there were many paths to be taken. As she progressed in her Christian walk, she realized that one road in particular needed to be traveled more thoroughly, the road of forgiveness. It was not a road easily taken, but Dini made the journey enabled by love. Not just any love, but the love that comes from God, unconditional love. The Apostle Paul writes about this love in 1 Corinthians chapter 13. He says it is patient and kind, it is not easily angered, and keeps no record of wrongs. It believes all things, hopes all things, bears all things. It is a love that never fails. This is the love Dini was always seeking, even when she was rebellious and lost, she needed this love to endure rejection from her family. She needed it to forgive those who had harmed her most, especially her father. This is the kind of love the Heavenly Father has for you. He loves you. He loves you just as you are. When Dini cried out to God to show her the way, she had no idea that Jesus would come to her in a vision of the night revealing His glory and overwhelming her with His love and tenderness. Yet, yeah, that's what happened. Jesus may or may not come to you in a dream or vision. That is not the point as much as it is this. 
God loves you and He wants you to be His child through faith in Jesus Christ. He wants you to come into His family so that when the journey of your life comes to a end on earth, you will live with Him forever in heaven. Are you ready to open your heart to Him as Dini did? If you want to receive Jesus Christ as your Savior, say these words with me. Say, Lord, I believe in Jesus. I accept Jesus as my God and Savior. Forgive my sins and make me your child, O Lord. Thank you. In the name of Jesus, amen. You have now received eternal life with God. Now you are one of His children. Praise God.